Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to use a higher order functions like map, filter, or reduce to solve a complex problem. Uh, now that you have worked through a few challenges using higher order functions like map, filter, reduce, you now get to apply them to solve a more complex challenge. We have defined a function named square list. You need to complete the code for square list function using any combination of map, filter, and reduce so that it returns a new array containing only the square of only the positive integers. Decibel numbers are not integers. Well, only of only positive integers. When an array of real numbers is passed to it. An example of an array containing only real numbers is negative 3, 4.8. It's an array with the, with the numbers negative 3, 4.8, 5, 3, and negative 3.2. Your function should not use any kind of for or while loops or the for each function. Interesting. Okay, so if I look over here, it should be a function, square list. Okay, it's already a function, so I bet that would pass if we ran it now. Or, or this would probably pass, but we're not doing anything. We don't want to use while or for each loops. We should use, oh, it says or, so that means that we can use probably one or many. The function should return an array. Uh, look at that. It's not returning an array yet. Well, yeah, square list. It's getting passed in an array and it's returning an array. So, uh, and this should return 16, 1,764 1, and 36. Square list should return 9,149. Okay, so what do we really want it to do here? We have to find a function. You need to complete the code square list function using any combination map filter so that it returns a new array containing only the square of only the positive integers. Decimal numbers are not integers. When an array of real numbers is passed to it. An example of an array containing... Okay, so this is real numbers, but we want only positive integers. Okay, so the square of positive integers... So the positive integers here, four is a positive integer. Four squared, so four times four is 16. Four, eight, uh, 12, 16. So that's that one. This is not a positive integer. This is not a positive integer. This is not a positive integer. This is 42 uh, times 42. One, seven, six, four, perfect. And six. So we first off, we just want to filter the positive integers. Uh, and then we want to um, sum them each up. So yeah, I think that that's a way to go. We want to filter, and then we want to map them by squaring them by themselves. So I think that's a pretty straightforward uh, answer to this question. So let's uh, get after it. First off, I would say let's let a result array is equal to here, and then we can return the result. Um, I think that's a good way to start. That way we're not uh, trying to manipulate the array at all, because that is against our functional pro programming background. And um, yeah, so here we can get rid of this now. I was just doing that because it's good to question assumptions early. Are we getting the square of those? I became clear and that that's what we're going for. And that, was, and that way I was able to figure out what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, <clears throat> let's see, for this one, a positive integers, I'm pretty sure these are all even, but is it, does it care whether they're even or not of all positive integers of only containing only this the square of only the positive integers okay so i'm thinking three times three yeah three squared is three times three times three so three six nine we basically want our result on this one to be uh five times five is 25 and uh three times three is nine right so we want our result to be Um, let's see, three. Well, instead of just doing this random one that they have here, why don't we do one where we know the answer? So I'm just gonna pass this into here. 
and then we want our result to be this. Yeah, that's an assumption. That 7 times 7 is 49. So that's what we want. We want our result to be this. Okay, cool. And so right now we're just getting an empty array. So what do we want to do? First we want to say, um, let, <clears throat> first off we want to just get real numbers. When an array of real numbers is passing, containing only the, the square of only positive integers. So we want to say positive integers is equal to what? The array dot uh, filter. Uh, and I'm going to do old JavaScript. Um, initially, and then we'll refactor later. So this is the older way of writing the functions, and then we'll refactor it to arrow functions later. So, so how do you say that? If num, let's see, positive integer. I think that we could go like if right, console.log, let's say 10.2 is equal to uh, parse int 10.2. Okay, that's false. But what if we were to pass in 10? That becomes true. No, but 03, that becomes true as well. So that doesn't work. So we want to find a way to find out whether or not triple equals parse int. Okay, so what I'm trying to find out is how do we find JavaScript, how to find out JavaScript if a number is a positive integer. is integer. Oh, cool. Number dot is integer. So can we go uh, number dot is integer? And then we could say 10. This should be true. 10.2. False. Negative 10. False. Hmm. Well, we know that. Okay, so we could do it uh, two things. Okay, so uh, if <clears throat> we can do both. No, if the number is an integer, and we want to pass in the number, not 10, and number is greater than 0, then we want to return the number. Well, and otherwise we don't. Number is not defined. No, it's down there. I got the error. Number is not defined. Okay. So now we can get rid of this. We know what it is. Uh, now what? Let's see. Let's just re make our res our instead of returning the result, we can pass in positive integers. Okay. So our yeah, that's it. And so now all we now okay. So now we. We've got all of the positive integers coming out from here. Negative 5 was filtered out, but 3, 10, and 7 all remained. And these are all derivatives of there. And so, uh, yeah, well, actually, you know what we could do is we can just return number times number. No. Okay, cool. So now we need to map it. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we go, actually, positive integers squared. Okay, so then we return positive integers squared. We get this. What we could do now is we go dot map and we go function and the uh, number and then we return number times number. Uh, yeah, 9, 10, 49. Cool. So I think that this is the right answer. We can run the test. Nice, they pass. Okay, so there's probably a way to do you reduce. There's probably a hundred different ways to do this. Let's do a little refactoring. So first off, this could be an arrow function and that'll make our code cleaned up a little bit more, right? This one also could be a arrow function. And that cleans up our code and makes it a little more modern. 
This is uh, fine to be on one line because it's so short. Uh, let's see here. What else could we do? This this could be on one line as well because it's short as well. Uh, so yeah, already our code's looking much more succinct, even though I'm not sure if it's as readable as it was just a little bit ago. But, um, you know, that's a decision that you've got to make. I guess this is... You know, we don't need the result variable anymore unless we wanted to make that. But I like naming them with, I'm a long uh, variable name kind of guy. So if you don't like that, that's fine. A lot of this is just, this isn't necessarily the way that you have to do it or whatever. This is just what, how I think about it. I would probably refactor this down because positive integer squared is pretty straightforward. And I would use that as a function name. I, I would just basically remember that it worked in a function like this. And this is fairly readable once you get to a certain level. And uh, yeah, I don't see any linting errors or anything like that. This looks, it looks a little crowded, but I don't know. I think that this is good. It definitely works the way we want it to. And so, yeah, this is the refactored way of doing it. Um, yeah, do you even need the brackets in here? Yeah, okay, you do. Cool, return the number positive integer squared. I think that that's the best way to put it as well. So yeah, run the test and they pass. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope that I made it more explicit by talking the way through it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So um, if you found a better one, that's great. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next lesson.